Good day and welcome to STL Bricks Insight where we look at what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now today I want to look at the bricks and its influence in Latin America which traditionally has been the domain of the United States of America. I mean although one Latin American country is a member of the BRICS alliance a number of others have either applied or have expressed interest in joining the organization. So what is the current situation and how is it changing and is there anything the US can do to stop the erosion of its influence in Latin America? Now for over 200 years the United States has considered Latin America as its backyard and totally under its influence and control. Indeed, over the years it's ordered a regime change, organised coups and interfered in elections overthrowing elected presidents if they crossed the USA. Allende of Chile springs to mind back in the 1970s. Now it's become very obvious that the influence of the United States in Latin America is waning. Even Western media outlets are now highlighting that the lack of decisive action from Joe Biden's administration has led to a more challenging situation on the southern flank of America's borders and influencing its interests. Now, it appears there's a growing trend of countries in the region turning towards Russia, China and Iran. Now today I'm going to raise the questions of whether the White House will continue to adhere to the Monroe Doctrine or are the old neocon hawks facing disappointment and the, the collapse of their dreams. I mean currently the American neocons and warrant hawks are grappling with the reality of global change particularly in regions where the US has historically played a dominant role. Now in his article The Fatal Death of Doctrine for Forbes, the publisher, businessman and former Republican candidate for president Steve Forbes concluded that Washington's loss of Latin America as a harbinger of impending disaster facing the United States. He says by turning our back on the Monroe Doctrine we are making it clear that the United States can no longer be trusted to lead the free world as it did after World War II, Forbes emphasised. Now before I continue I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos you can help me fund the channel and my website seobricksinsight.com to further develop it. You can do this by making a small donation which is done by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. It's on the right hand side. Everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me and I'm thanking you all now just for watching because I do appreciate every single viewer. Now the Monroe Doctrine is the principles of foreign policy that were established back in 1823 by the then President James Monroe. He designated Latin America as a sphere of US influence and took steps to safeguard it from European interference. Back in 1904 Theodore Roosevelt further expanded the Monroe's Doctrine's scope by giving the White House the authority to independently enforce what it calls security measures in the region. Subsequently the US engaged in two world wars and a cold war with the Soviet Union Forbes uh, says and it commends the effectiveness of the Monroe Doctrine in countering Moscow's influence in Latin America. Currently he says it's a crucial element in maintaining stability given the heightened activity from Russia, China and Iran in this regard. Now despite the major political differences between Washington and Beijing, China has become over the last few years the largest trading partner of most Latin American countries and it's also one of the largest investors in most Latin American countries. I mean the deep water port, port project in Chiangke in Peru is frequently cited as a potential threat to American interests. To date the Chinese company Costco and its local partners have invested over 1.3 billion in the construction project. Now as reported by The Economist the value of trade between China and Latin America has grown from 18 billion in 2022 to 450 billion in 2022. China has also prioritised the threat strengthening of its cooperation with Brazil, Ch Chile and Peru and this is not limited to just economic considerations but also to political issues. There's a large number of Chinese diplomats in the region and the number is growing and they are well versed in the specifics of the region 
and are fluent in the languages of Spanish and Portuguese. I mean, the US views Chile as the most significant of its partners in Latin America. However, Chinese companies control more than two thirds of the country's energy sector, and Beijing is also the major investor in its key mining and infrastructure projects. Also, despite the best efforts of the US, Moscow's also made great strides. Contrary to the US expectations, BRICS continues to function fully and Brazil's become the largest purchaser of Russian diesel fuel, according to the Financial Times reports. Russia's also investing heavily into Brazil with the building of a new fertilizer project plan in the country by Eurochem and another a number of major industrial projects. And also Washington failed to get many of the South American and Caribbean countries to support its anti-Russian position on Ukraine. Yeah, it managed to do so in Europe with the vassals in the EU, but Biden has encountered serious, serious resistance on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean. Also, Iran has made some notable advancements in Latin America and Central America, and this is particularly relevant in the cases of Venezuela and Bolivia. Now, they've concluded a number of agreements, and they also concluded agreements with Nicaragua and Cuba. Now, Tehran's looking to significantly strengthen its ties with Rio de Janeiro, now that both countries are members of BRICS. Now, Juan Gabriel Toctalian, who's a professor at Argentina's Tocturo de Lela University, means the principles of European and American foreign policy from two centuries ago are still relevant. He says, the Monroe Doctrine is a long-standing concept. Nevertheless, although it's not yet been superseded by more recent thinking, its whole standing has certainly been severely weakened. Now, Mexico's overtaken China in its level of trade turnover with the United States in 2023. However, that figure is deceptive as Mexico imports a large number of components and materials from China are then put together and exported to the U US. I mean, the latest container trade statistics analysed by Zenita show that exports of shipping containers from China to Mexico were up by 60% in January compared with the same month in the previous year. Now, this surge in exports from China to Mexico is indicative of importers seeking alternative sources to circumvent US tariffs. I mean, both Harris and Trump are, uh, are keen to strengthen protectionism, which is, represents a direct threat to their economic ties with all Latin American countries, and particularly Mexico, its southern border. Meanwhile, Beijing's rapidly expanding its trade with Mexico. Container shipments are, are up 30% year on year, with another 20% growth in January to July. And Chinese companies are relocating their manufacturing facilities to Mexico just to get around any of uh, these sanctions and tariffs that the US is. I mean, this allows them to source components, raw materials, and manufacture the project in Mexico, says Juan Duarte, who specializes in cross border logistics. Meanwhile, the recently elected president of Mexico, Claudia Scheinbaum, has indicated that she will not blindly adhere to the directives of Washington. Instead, she says she wants to foster constructive ties with Russia. And according to the Mexican political scientist Marco Romero, Mexico will no longer be subject to ridicule on the global stage by following blindly uh, the diktats of Washington. Now, the media is warning Washington to be cautious of Mexico's potential departure from its sphere of influence. I mean, Biden's advisers have adopted a seriously detached stance with regard to developments in Latin America. But that's probably more related to the absolute cluelessness that's exhibited at the top of the State Department, which is led by the clownish Tony Blinken, who is to the art of diplomacy what horseshit is to hot cuisine. Now, the next incumbent will be required to determine what the appropriate course of action is in the new circumstances. However, the White House may have time to react and the consequences may just be too late when it does. So with Brazil, the BRICS head in um, Latin America and more countries from that continent likely to join, it seems that the US has been elbowed out of a continent that it considers its own fiefdom in its backyard. Now, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, help me fund the channel by making a donation 
by clicking on the thanks button. Don't forget the comments section. Love to see your comments, love to read your comments, and I love to respond to them. Until then, next time, see you and goodbye.